Thanks so much for joining us for Sundays in Song. My name is Doug Buchanan, Director of Music at St. David's, and I'm here with uh, composer Sonder Choi. We've been performing uh, Sonder's Dross in the Spirit's Tether for several years now, and I'm finally getting a chance to uh, sit down and uh, talk with you about it. Uh, we've loved performing this piece. I was wondering if you'd be able to tell us just a, a little bit about how this anthem came to be. Yeah, so I wrote this anthem um, quite some time ago while I was working as the choir director at um, St. Matt's Lutheran in North Hollywood. Um, this place was sort of the first job, choir directing job that I got out of um, my master's when I finished my master's in Los Angeles. Uh, before that, I had been working in, in church spaces um, as a staff singer, as a professional singer. Um, I would say that this is just maybe like the first conducting gig that I uh, had. And um, with that comes programming. Um, and since I, I'm I'm a composer, I, you know, I, I enjoy writing stuff for my own ensemble. Um, it is something, it is a skill set that that I think that would be helpful for a lot of uh, choir directors to have, frankly. I mean, Bach did the same thing for his ensembles and his church. And so uh, that was a practice that I wanted to, um, to to continue. And this particular text, you know, is is something that that has a, a hymn tune um, attached to it already. Uh, and it's something that um, I, I like, I like the text. Um, of course, nowadays, I don't program this because of the language. I work at a Unitarian Universalist church nowadays. And so uh, the approach is slightly different to to um, music programming and and um, and sort of just just the cent centering Christianity is not really something that we do at a UU church. Um, but that's essentially how this this anthem came to be. Mm -hmm. That's certainly something folks at St. David's are familiar with. They are frequently subjected to my own compositions, um, so uh, they they know how that works. But also, um, uh, for this particular Sunday uh, at Communion, we're doing a piece by William Byrd, who, of course, went back and forth between different approaches to language based on what, uh, what the prevailing um, religious feelings were of, of the time. The composers are both writing something that uh, that is expressing something from themselves, but they're also working their own gigs. You know, they're they're also uh, creating something for a for a specific event, for a specific time, a specific place. Um, and I remember uh, my the first church that I served writing something for them. And it's there's a sort of special relationship that you um, that you develop when when you're doing that. Um, was that something that uh, we certainly like it a lot at St. David's. Was that was it a piece that was received well by the choir? Did they did they feel that sort of gift interchange there? Yeah, yeah. I I this is this wasn't the first time I wrote something for them. Um, I often do arrangements of things, um, or even if it's just the same tune sung in unison, sort of like rearranging the piano part. We had a very very um skilled pianist and accompanist during my time at St. Matt's uh and it was really really fun sort of just being able to work that out musically um this anthem has been done by other um Christian churches um and of course like when I wrote this back in 2017 and and uh versus today's a lot of things have changed um and you see more and more of the liberal Christian spaces sort of going away from patriarchal language. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of like for for example, first congregational church of Los Angeles, it's it's a it's a Christian, it's a it's um um UUC church or UCC church rather. Um you see them changing some of the words like brethren, for example, some of these like masculine centered words and and feel free to do that in your own ensemble as well with words like brethren, God the Father. Um, I've heard them change it to God the Spirit, for example. 
Uh, I've also seen uh, God the God the Giver is is one that uh, and that works well with the text setting there too. Yeah, um, exactly. yeah, that's uh, that 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 malleability of this uh, of uh, of hymn language to express something that's uh, that's uh, inclusive and welcoming, and especially something uh, like this that is um, that is very much a welcoming piece. Uh, I mean, both both. The, the text and the sound world there is there is a sense of gathering in and uh and and gathering together which is precisely why we're uh using it for our homecoming uh sunday um, i was just curious if we could get a sense what are some of the other things uh that you uh that you do as part of your as, as part of your gigs as part of your life as a composer and uh you're also a conductor and you're a professional singer um, every musician's life is different. We all sort of put the puzzle pieces together uh, uh, in different ways. And I know folks are always interested to hear how uh, how composers do that. So what what are some of the things that you're working on right now? Yeah, there are a variety of, of things that composers do, um, including arranging orchestration work. So I do a fair amount of of arranging for gala ensembles or gay and lesbian choruses, um, some of which have uh, or orchestras, some some of whom perform with orchestras, and so that includes a lot of orchestration work, and that certainly takes a huge amount of time. On top of that, working on original commissions, new works for mostly choruses and sometimes wind ensembles, chamber ensembles also. Um, I'm, I'm also doing a lot of professional singing with choirs here in Southern California, I know that um, SAG-AFTRA is is on strike right now, which is very appropriate. Um, a, apart from you know the writers and uh, um, very appropriate for post Labor Day talk, uh, right. but that's also sort of part of the the professional singing sphere here in in Los Angeles. As we often get this wonderful opportunity of singing in films and movies. Um, apart from that, I do also teach. I'm the composition teaching artist for the Los Angeles Master Chorale in, in our oratorio project and Voices Within programs. Um, basically, it's all of those, and I, I music direct at a church. So this, this coming fall, I am uh, participating in a lot of um, singing gigs as a, as, as, uh, in gigs as a singer. Um, also because of the California Festival that is coming up which is very exciting. First time in California having a, a festival all across the state with big and small ensembles performing new music. So I'm, I'm very, very excited about that upcoming um, festival in November. Yeah. Yeah, that's phenomenal. Yep, that's uh, that sort of patchwork of, uh, of different things, performing, composing, arranging, um, uh, organizing all of these things are things that composers uh, have been doing for a long time to uh, but not only uh, to for their careers and to put bread on the table but it also uh, I I've found that uh, that triangulation of things helps us think about music uh, from from all angles being part uh, having to actually physically do it as a performer I think makes us more sensitive composers and I think composing and organizing gives us certain insights as as performers and so that sort of trifecta of things makes for a very uh uh very sort of true true voices in our music so thank for you for sure. sharing that thank for you sure. for sharing that with us um uh anything else that uh, that you'd like to share before we go yeah i think um to to piggyback on what you just said you know being a performer really helps in composing and and going back to draw us in the spirits tether that is why there's an optional this is written with an optional organ doubling you know it, it's sort of like like we know us as church musicians that that our our ensemble you know that people have lives you know our our, our choir members have lives and and our choir members need grace you know we can't be very very strict with i mean there's a level of expectation when it comes to attendance but but life happens and a lot of our our choir members in church are are don't don't do music full time and and that's okay and that's why we need this the support 
of instruments sometimes. And um, so th there's that option of singing this a cappella or singing it with an organ doubling, depending on what what you need, what we need at that time, or what is capable at that time. And so this is really one of those pieces that's simple and very, very flexible um, for, for a lot of groups. Yeah, well, we've certainly enjoyed singing it, and we're looking forward to seeing it this Sunday. Thank you so much, Sonder, for uh, taking some time out of your day and uh, sharing uh, some of your compositional life with us. We really appreciate it. Of course. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely.